Let's start here. This frame is from December 19th, pulled live from Chuck's astrophotography using Starfront's 24-inch telescope. At first glance, it looks quiet, a compact glow, a soft envelope, nothing dramatic. But look closer at the geometry. The central region stays tight and well-defined, while the surrounding haze stretches unevenly in one direction. It isn't blooming symmetrically. It isn't smearing with the stars. The object holds its shape while the background confirms the mount is behaving exactly as it should. This matters because large apertures don't forgive mistakes. A 24-inch system amplifies tracking errors, seeing issues, and processing artifacts. If something appears cleanly here, it isn't accidental. What we're seeing is a persistent, directionally biased structure, already familiar from smaller scopes, now confirmed again at much higher resolving power. This becomes our baseline. Now let's move image by image and see what changes, and more importantly, what doesn't. Now move to this one. This image comes from December 19th, captured by Yvonne Vasquez at Colopa Stars using a C-Star S50, a much smaller, consumer-grade system compared to the 24-inch we just saw. And that contrast is the point. Despite the shorter two-minute stack of 10-second exposures, the object doesn't dissolve into noise. The core stays compact. The surrounding glow isn't circular, it stretches subtly in the same general direction seen in the large telescope data. Notice what isn't happening. The stars remain round, there's no smearing from bad tracking, no aggressive processing pulling shapes out of nothing. Yet the object itself still shows an elongated inner structure even at this scale. Small scopes are unforgiving in a different way. If a feature survives limited exposure time and modest optics, it isn't something that appears only under extreme processing or large apertures. What we're seeing here is scale-independent behavior. Large telescope, small telescope, same story. Now look at this follow-up frame from the same observer. This is a 15 to 16 minute stack, still from the C-Star S50, taken later the same night on December 19th. With more integration time, something important happens. The object doesn't just get brighter, it gets more defined. You can clearly see the inner region stretch into a narrow, elongated shape with a brighter condensation at one end and a softer extension trailing away from it. The surrounding glow isn't symmetric, it has a preferred axis. Meanwhile, the background stars tell a different story. They stay round, they don't smear, they don't stretch in the same direction. That rules out wind shake, tracking error, or stacking artifacts. What this frame adds is temporal reinforcement. Same instrument, same night, longer exposure, same orientation. If this were noise or a processing illusion, longer stacking would blur it out. Instead, it sharpens. That's the pattern we keep seeing. Now we jump to Italy. This image comes from Tony Scarato, captured on December 18th using a 25-centimeter Newtonian telescope. This isn't casual imaging. It's a long, carefully stacked sequence with known resolution, pixel scale, and field orientation. First, look at the raw, wide field. The background stars are streaked, which tells you the telescope is tracking the object itself, not the sky. And right at the center, 3 i Atlas stays tight. Now compare that to the resampled close-up on the right. The inner coma is no longer circular. It's elongated, with a clear axis running at roughly a position angle of about 110 degrees. That's a measurable direction, not a vague blur. The central condensation is sharply defined. Around it, the outer coma expands into a broad, greenish envelope estimated to span hundreds of thousands of kilometers. What matters here isn't just the shape, it's the structure within the shape, a compact central core, an elongated inner region, a larger asymmetric outer coma. This isn't a single diffuse cloud, it's a layered system. And once again, the elongation lines up with what we've already seen from smaller instruments, from different continents on different nights. Different telescope, different processing, same directional behavior. That consistency is doing the heavy lifting here. Now we move to New Zealand. 
This frame was captured by Brian Dietrich on December 17 using a 203mm Schmidt Cassegrain. Short exposures, minimal processing, clean tracking. At first glance, it looks quiet. A faint object, no dramatic flare, no obvious tail. But that's the point. The central condensation stays compact, no smearing, no breakup, and the surrounding glow isn't random. It shows a subtle bias in one direction. Now look at the inset. This is a stretch of the same data. Nothing added, nothing painted in, and again, the inner structure doesn't collapse into noise. It holds together. That matters because at this faint level, artifacts usually dominate. Edges wobble, centers wander, shapes dissolve. That doesn't happen here. Instead, the core stays locked, while the surrounding material shows the same preferred orientation already seen from Italy and Hawaii. Different hemisphere, different telescope, same behavior. By this point, the pattern isn't coming from one setup or one observer, it's coming from the object. Now we step off Earth entirely. This image wasn't taken by an amateur telescope or even a ground-based observatory. It comes from NASA's Europa Clipper spacecraft using its ultraviolet spectrograph, captured on November 6th from about 164 million kilometers away. This isn't a photograph in the usual sense. It's an intensity map showing where ultraviolet emission concentrates as the instrument scans the sky. That bright blue region is 3i hatless, and the emission isn't spherical. It isn't symmetric. It's elongated along a preferred direction embedded within a broader diffuse structure. Even in ultraviolet, even from interplanetary space, even with a completely different observing method, the geometry holds. UV instruments don't care about dust tails or optics. They respond to gas and interaction with solar radiation. So when directionality appears here, it isn't a camera artifact or a processing trick. It's physical. At this point, the same orientation shows up in raw optical frames, RGB channel splits, long time series stacks, and ultraviolet spectroscopy from a spacecraft millions of kilometers away. Different physics, same alignment. That's no longer coincidence, it's behavior. So this is where we land. Across different nights, different telescopes, different continents, and even a spacecraft, 3i Atlas keeps showing the same thing. A compact core and a directional structure that refuses to fade, rotate randomly, or break apart. This isn't coming from one observer or one filter, and it isn't appearing only after heavy processing. Whatever is driving this behavior is stable, persistent, and real. The question now isn't whether the structure exists, it's why it's holding together this cleanly, and why it's showing up so clearly right now.